All right, can you go on and tell the people your name, please? Okay, hi, my name is Ava. Um, I'm the mother of Gary Burton, uh, the Reggie Money. He was married, as you guys know, he was married in 2017. He's not the studio. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how many kids you have, how many grandkids? Oh, well, I have five children, and I'm a mother of five, and the grandmother of 16 nice. grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest one is be 18 in February. All right, can you tell us a little bit about G Money? Oh, well, G was a, a very uh, loving young man, very loving guy. He never met a stranger, never met a stranger. Everybody he met, everybody he met grew on him. I mean, everybody. All the kids loved him, the grown, older people loved him, everybody. What kind of kid he was growing up? A lovable kid, <laughs> very lovable. Um, he, he, don't get me wrong, he got in some trouble. Now, he did some bad stuff. Mm -hmm. He went to Rams and he got a little something, but uh, he always had a plan, though. He always told me he had a plan. Mm -hmm. You know where his love and music came from? My oldest son started first. They watch him. Okay. Uh, Chris, B. R. S. Him. He, he was he was uh, rapping, and they used to, my two boys used to watch him, mm -hmm. and they started watching him. And ever since then, he'll go to school. He'll rap everything he say. Now he everything you talk to him, he'll rap everything. Every word he say, he rap to you mm -hmm. when he talk to you. How how, how did you feel uh, knowing he was gonna make it off of music? I was excited for him. Mm -hmm. I told him to get the first deal, but he wouldn't take it. Well, who that was? Um, I told him that when, they, when he went out to New York and they offered him $300,000, mm -hmm. he called me on the phone and he said, Mom, they offered me $300,000, I said, take it. He said, no, Mom, I got too many people depending on me. I don't, I don't want to take that, Mom. I, I can get more. Mm -hmm. You got more people, you know. And I said, son, just take it. Something else will come later. No, Mom, no, I, I, I can do better than that. I said, you can do better than that, but right now, just go ahead and take it. Mm -hmm. He didn't want anything about always thinking about other people besides himself, you know. Uh, what are you talking to you about about his music career? About he gonna make it? How he want to give me this big house? And we gonna? I'm not, he got tired of me working. He said, "Look, the work since I've been going to school, mom, saying you go to work every morning. Mm -hmm. I want you to. I'm gonna get my music. I'm gonna get you somewhere. I'm gonna get me somewhere. I'm gonna be good, mom. You know." He said, he "Just want to be. You know, he didn't want to be rich. He just want to be. I mean, he want to be rich, not famous. Just take care of everybody. Yeah, that's what he want to do. He says, all he want to. He care about the fame. Mm -hmm. How many kids he had? Uh, four. Four? Oh, okay. Yeah, he has four. What's the uh, age range of them? The oldest one, I think it's what, uh, five? Five, like two around the same age. Around four and two, two, just two. Okay. And then we got one boy, because he wanted a boy. Mm -hmm. He got that one boy. Alright. Oh, uh, alright, so what year was he born? Mm. In 2017. Okay, is it good you can talk to us about the last time you talked to him? I talked to him earlier that night. It was a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. uh, he called me and said he was coming over. And I told him I needed a TV for my house. And I was telling him to give me his TV. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm, I'm going to get him on. I was like, no, you come. I'll send Shira. Because he always sent the girlfriend to bring everything for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, you come. yourself. I want to see your face. And I always tell him when I talk to him, I want to see you breathing, son. Yeah. I always told him that. He like, mom, why do you say that? I just always tell him that, you know? Yeah, man. Other than that. All right, so the night he was murdered, can you tell us like what was you doing and how did you find out? I was asleep, mm -hmm. and uh, Shara called the Tutu's mom, the, my little grandson's mom. Yeah. She called and said, "Mama, you you been shot." So I'm just thinking he just was shot. I'm not thinking that he was, you know, dead. She saying, and we on the phone, I'm putting my clothes trying to come. She said, "Mama, mom, G was shot," and I'm like, "What? Where, where, where you going? I mean, you know, hospital or whatever." She's like, "No, mom, he gone." And I'm like, "Gone, oh, gone well." You know, I'm jumping up. And she said, Mom, you know, she said, it's how we turn on the phone, making them. And so I get to the scene, I see the yellow tape. Mm -hmm. All the guys that was in the studio was in the police hall. And I'm asking the police, where my boy? You know, where's my boy? He, they looking at me. Get back, ma'am, get back. My oldest son was trying to get to the scene. They pushing him back out the way. That's my, let me see my little brother. So they kept saying, get back. And I'm asking them, where's my boy? They like, everybody in the car. They like, your boy said, the boy, he, the hell, you know what I'm saying? And I just was, I was just hoping that it wasn't true when I get there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So once, I, once they came to me after everything, we said I sat out there. When they came, they bought me a brown paper bag with that TBG chain and some, a couple hundreds of something in the bag. And they told me the time of death. And that just was so, <laughs> it just seemed so real to me. Yeah, man. They said, uh, Gary Burton, time of death, uh, one o'clock or something like that, one forty-five, something like that. And I'm like, wow, you know, really? Mm -hmm. I just, it just, just seemed so real to me. Ain't seen real. Yeah, it just didn't seem real to me. And they was trying to, you know, tell me, so they said they got in touch with me and all that stuff and everything. 
But I still just couldn't, couldn't grasp the fact that he really was gone. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, what you want people to know most about you? I want them to know that um, he was a very, he was a good guy. He's not like the streets portray him to be. He loved everybody. People loved him wherever he went. And um, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna keep his name going for sure. And that's what everybody know. I just, just about the type of person he was, you know. Don't believe everything you hear. People tell you he was this. Oh, he's in the gang. He do this, do that. He had a good heart, heart to go. Man. Oh, he loved his family. He loved his family. He loved his friends. He loved his friends. And the people that hate the enemies. Mm -hmm. He can see some man that we'll be at the store, or something we laugh, and uh, he'll see a guy and speak to him. What's up? He's like, hey, I don't let the old man. He don't like me. And he'll just smile. Mm -hmm. He don't like you, really? You know, we laugh about it. Smiling, yeah, he always, he always smiles no matter what. You know, he was going to be a good child, but let me tell you something. He told me he was never basic. I'm not basic. Look, he worked the job. He started off at Arizona 16. He left there and went to uh, the neighborhood Walmart on um, Old Hammond Highway. And he came on one day, he said, Ma, I ain't finna work no more. I say, what? He say, shoot, I got some shoot. I'm different, Ma. I'm, 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 I ain't basic, Ma. I got something. I got a plan. I'm, I'm gonna be something. I ain't finna do yeah, the future, I ain't finna work no job. And I'm going, you don't work no job, I work. Oh no, man, I'm not finna work no more. And I'm looking at him like, what? <laughs> no. No, so he really had a plan. He said he's not he's not basic, he's not finna work no job. He just made a plan that he had in his head that he's gonna be something in life. Yeah, something great in life, you know. He made his mind up and he put his mind to it and it was coming together like he thought that, that he wanted to. It was coming together. Yeah, what you gonna tell other mother that lost their child to free by? Look, keep on praying. Don't never forget the good times with them. Keep, just keep that, keep that name going. Don't never forget the good times. Never. And keep you going. Think about a good memory, something to make you laugh. We all have sad moments. But I always think about something that, that make you laugh about them. Because I have moments sometimes. I ain't gonna lie, I see a breakdown and stuff when I go in and I'm cooking or something. The holidays, because I cook what he liked his favorite. Mm -hmm. His favorite thing is red beans and fried chicken. He would eat that wherever I met. He would eat that anyway. He loved that. was his favorite meal. So I'm, I cooked that today. <laughs> And I just want guys to know, you know, think of something that make some positive he did to make you go on, you know, keep on going because it's it's hard. You think time heal or no? No. People tell you time heal wounds. They lie. It make you get cold with a little bit. It's. I mean, I keep saying the healing process, but I still cry. Yeah. Some moments I be in the kitchen, you just don't know why. I just break down sometimes. I be cooking, just cry, you know, because you. I mean, I got. I have five children. Everybody got different personality, and you lose one. You know, everybody's different, so it's still, you know, you're miss, missing out on, on something. Yeah, and I won't tell these parents, I mean, tell these people that are kicking these guns, or y'all just put them down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's hard. Because even, even when they want to kill somebody, they actually, it's like the shooter, they actually do yeah, the baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. And I feel sorry for that, their parents, mm -hmm. you know, too, just as well. Yeah, even the guy that said that murdered my, murdered my kid or whatever, I feel sorry for his parents. Mm -hmm. You know, because I don't understand he had to do whoever did it. Yeah, and they asked me, and I, and I get to go to court, and they tell me to go to court, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him, what made you decide to just shoot him like this? I really want to know. Yeah. What made you decide to shoot him? All right. Oh, you got a documentary coming up. Yeah. All right, what are you talking about? Okay, uh, documentary, working on it now, the guys in California can get together, fuck me. Um, and also, uh, the issue. Uh, Listener's mom, all the G's mom, we're getting together, we're doing something too. Gonna be surprised, you guys gonna be surprised. We got some loud stuff coming for you guys, y'all gonna be excited. Just stay tuned, a lot of stuff we're about to do. <laughs>